Hi, hi there, this is Max from Spring 2015, CS6218. Today we're looking at discussion two, which is a discussion on recursion and tree recursion, specifically looking at problem six, which is asking us to draw an environment diagram for the following code. This is in the recursive section. Okay, so first let's just sort of blindly execute this environment diagram, because we know how to do that, right? So we'll start by reading from the top. We're going to define rec, which takes as an argument a function rec, which takes as an argument x and y. We're not going to read the code inside of this block until we execute it. And now we're going to actually make a call to this function, right? So let's evaluate our operator. Our operator is rec, which we have in our global frame, the frame that we're calling from. It's going to be the function rec with the parent that's global. And we know what x, what 3 and 2 is equal to, right? So we can just go ahead and make an actual, to actually call our function. So let's call the function rec. It's got a global parent. Right away, we're going to make environments or local variables for our two arguments, which were x and y. x was 3, y is equal to 2. So now we can look inside of our actual, uh, our body of our function. So we'll check the first case, y greater than 0. So this is, uh, this is true. So we're going to, as a return value, we're going to return x times rec of x and y minus 1. So let's look at this function call. Take a look at our operator. We don't have a rec in this frame, so we'll look to our parent. Rec is here. It's the function rec. x is defined locally, so we'll take a look at 3. y is defined locally, so 2. And we're going to pass in 2 minus 1, which is going to be 1. And so now we're ready to actually make a new frame, rec. It's got a global parent because the parent is always equal to the frame in which it was defined. We're going to make two local variables for our arguments. x is still equal to 3. y now is going to be equal to 1. Now we're going to make another function call. So our return value is going to be x times rec, which we have up here. Uh, we're going to take a look and see if we have rec in here. We don't have rec in our frame 2. We'll look in our parent. Rec is up here. It's the function rec. And then x and y minus 1. x is 3. y is 1. So now we're ready to make a new function call. Global parent. We'll make local variables again for our arguments. x is 3. y is going to be 0 this time. So now let's read the body of rec. If y is greater than 0, this doesn't pass, so we're going to just return 1. Return value is 1. Now we made a call to rec up in our return value from our previous frame. We know what 3 is. 3 is equal to 3, or x is equal to 3. We're going to times it by the return value that we had from 3 called with the argument 1. We called with the argument 0, I'm sorry. That's going to be equal to 1, so our return value is 3. Now we'll go one frame up from the frame that called us. So we're still waiting on, so we know what x is. x is still equal to 3. Now we're going to take a look at, this is this second value is going to be the, the result of calling rec with the arguments 3 and 1. We know what that return value is. It's 3. So we're going to have 3 times 3. It's equal to 9. So we're going to, if we had something to assign it to, we would return up the value 9 into our global frame. So what function does this look just like? It looks just like the pow function. So let's take a look at the sort of the way that we broke down our recursion in this rec function. Okay. So usually you would put your base case up first, but we can see that our actually recursive case comes in our first uh, if statement. So every time that we any time that we see a recursive call, which is a call to the function itself, the function that's being defined. Um, we can see that the recursion is actually happening in this first base case, in this first case, I'm sorry, and that our base case is actually y less than or equal to 0. So if y is less than or equal to 0, we're just going to return 1. Okay, so whenever you look at these functions and you're trying to figure out what they do, you should try and take a look and see if you can find the base case, which should be just some simple inputs to the function, and then try and figure out what the recursion is actually doing. And sometimes helping drawing an environment diagram is helpful for this. Okay, post a uh, post a uh, post on Piazza if you have any questions about this, or uh, follow up in the video. Great, have a nice night.